moving on to emphasize again the power of this, there's this guy named Nathan Pritigan who was one of the founders of lifestyle medicine. He had the simple statement, ah, all I'm trying to do is wipe out heart disease, diabetes, hypertension, and obesity. That's it, right? And so this guy's got a pretty interesting story. Now it's only an anecdote. We really shouldn't weigh too heavily on just one story, but his such an interesting story. He basically said, hey, I am going to uh, dedicate my life to this because he developed heart disease. He had very bad exertional angina uh, and he couldn't do much. He was debilitated. Went on a plant-based diet, changed his lifestyle, maintained a healthy weight and his completely symptoms went away. And he said, he's very gutsy. He developed this big program called the, the, Pritikin, uh, the Pritikin program, uh, Pritikin Longevity Center. And he said, when I die, I want my autopsy to be published in the New England Journal of Medicine so people can see what my arteries look like. And that's gutsy, right? How does he know? They didn't have all the imaging back then like we did. He was back in the 70s, I believe. And he died of leukemia, which was pre-existing before his heart disease issue eventually progressed and he died of leukemia. And this is what his autopsy showed, published in the New England Journal of Medicine, 1985. He had some yellow flat streaks, but no elevated plaques, no major blockage, and no reduction of the lumen. So no narrowing of the flow was found. No heart attacks of any size, no other findings referable to vascular disease. In a man 69 years old, the near absence of atherosclerosis and the complete absence of his effects are remarkable. And he was doing this for years and years and years, decades, uh, reversing his heart disease. Now that's just one story, but let's take it the next step further. Dr. Dean Ornish, he did publish the Lifestyle Heart Trial in a huge medical journal, Lancet, in 1990. And he took people and got them on a plant-based diet. They had coronary clogging. He had one group where they just did usual care for their cardiologist. Another went into his program, which was whole food, plant-based, low fat, exercise, meditation, love and support was another part he put in there. And it showed that when only big blockages were analyzed, the average percentage of blockages actually decreased if you were on the Ornish program eating plant-based, but they progressed if you were in the control group one year after the angiogram. These angiograms were sent to an independent lab in Texas, blinded the people who interpreted them, had no clue which group these patients were in. Then he repeated it again five years later. But after one year, it was very clear that there was regression. So five years later, he did the same thing. They repeated the angiograms, which are, it's an invasive test. And what did he end up finding? There was even more regression of coronary artery disease. And this is what happened with the monkey and the rabbit, right? You clog them up, put them back in the natural environment. They reverse their disease. Now it's shown in humans. We essentially have the cure for America's number one killer right here. It's lifestyle, it's plant-based, it's exercising, avoiding tobacco, we got it. They showed some great examples of reversal of disease. This is just, the only intervention here is not a stent, it's just diet. Went from a severely diseased, rattled, rattled out, uh, left anterior descending widowmaker artery to a completely normal artery with diet alone. Here's a nuclear stress test perfusion scan, a huge area of the heart not getting enough blood flow. Just three weeks later of a plant-based diet, suddenly all the flow is not quite all the flow, but almost all back, all just because the inflammation subsided and the cholesterol numbers went down, all from just diet. Absolutely amazing. So it really works and is very well validated. So there's the, there's the main finding there. So, so then um, this led to, and I, whenever, again, whenever you're talking about this to other people, when you're thinking about heart disease, plant-based diets, it's important to understand the uh, eat as little cholesterol and saturated fat as possible, according to the National Academy of Medicine, number one. Number two, it's super important to understand that you could tell people that the American Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics says 100% plant-based diet is nutritionally adequate, like we said. And here's another thing. The American Heart Association, American College of Cardiology Guidelines for the primary prevention of heart disease, trying to prevent the first heart attack or the first stroke, they say straight out a plant-based diet is recommended. It's in the guidelines. So nobody could ever fight me back before. This was in the guidelines in 2019 and I was preaching plant-based diets. I had pushback from colleagues. No, eat a Mediterranean diet, eat a Mediterranean diet, that's fine. I'm like, well, you know what? No, Mediterranean diet has never been shown to prevent heart disease. Let me say that again. The Mediterranean diet has never been shown to prevent heart disease with a little asterisk, with the exception of if you eat less meat on it, if you eat what's called a pro-vegetarian Mediterranean style diet, there was this big clinical trial called the PrediMed trial. And 
when they reanalyzed the post hoc data, only the patients who had less meat in their diet, four servings or less, actually had a reduction in heart disease. When you looked at that trial, the composite endpoint of heart attack, stroke, or dying overall improved, but that was driven because stroke was reduced, driven largely by the reduction of stroke in a Mediterranean diet, but there was no significant improvement over a controlled diet for mortality or heart attack if you ate a Mediterranean diet. Only when they analyzed it further, only people on a Mediterranean diet that ate a lot less meat. So a vegetarian or almost vegetarian Mediterranean style diet did reduce the risk, but again, no animal product is really needed and any amount can raise your numbers. So get as close to 100% plant-based as you can. And I love this statement. This is a guy who I admire quite a bit named Dr. Kim Williams, past president of the American College of Cardiology. I worked with him at Rush University for a couple of years. Uh, and he basically says, the way he puts it is, a whole food plant-based diet is a cure for heart disease. If you're a cardiologist and you don't tell your patient about the cure for their disease, that is medical malpractice because you are actively withholding a cure from your patient and you can't do that. You cannot withhold a cure from your patient. And another statement that he made, which is powerful, is there are two types of cardiologists, vegans and those who have not yet read the research. And that was a little, you know, it stirred it up a little bit. But then again, as people started reading the research, they realized how true it really is. And it uh, get people to change your diet and promote it more as physicians. So I think about when we're in medical school, where we take this whole Hippocratic oath, first do no harm, right? Well, we're doing a lot of harm if we don't promote this as the primary treatment for prevention and you know reversal even of heart disease. We really need to emphasize this. And we think about the Hippocratic oath. And the Hipp 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 Hippocrates also said, a lot of people don't realize this, let food be thy medicine, and let the medicine be thy food. Well, that's what we should be doing. This dude was like 2000 years ago. He knew what he was talking about. Why are we not doing this now? And again, it's culture and money, along with some other issues that are bringing this on. So really I emphasize whenever I give a talk to the, the general public that you need to help be the change. You really need to help because it's gonna take a group effort to help push this forward. What I always say is, first of all, you gotta be healthy yourself, right? If you don't take care of yourself, eat healthy, stay thin, exercise, do the right things, nobody else is gonna listen to you about it. So focus on your own health, get yourself on a plant-based diet, learn about this, study it, read about it. Remember, you are the change, speak up, demand change. You actually speak with your dollar, right? What you buy really makes a big difference. So really push hard for this and be a good example. And the one thing that you can know and you can learn is that you too have the power to save people's lives. Even if you're not a doctor in the healthcare industry, if you promote this message, you literally can save people's lives. It's such an important thing. Everybody needs to speak up and really push this forward. So really kind of to summarize and go through a few uh, ending comments here, what of course we're trying to do is shift from pills to plants, makes a lot of sense, right? Let the food be thy medicine. From the pharmacy, with a PH, to the pharmacy, with an F. And you may have known this guy named Dr. Michael Greger. He says, and I like to emphasize this too, because a lot of times people get it and they wanna go on a plant-based diet for their health. And they understand the science, they understand it's, it's the best thing, but they still have a hard time doing it because of their human instincts, their cravings for sugar, salt, and fat, because of our cultural influences and all the marketing in the industry, their home situation, whatever their stressor is that they have, it's still hard to do. So frequently it requires an extra motivation. What else can we do to motivate somebody to stick to the proper diet? And Dr. Michael Greger says, the most ethical diet just so happens to be the most environmentally sound diet and just so happens to be the healthiest diet, a plant-based diet. And so I do frequently talk with my patients about the ethical side of our food system and the environmental impact on it. And it really hit me to do this. Initially, I didn't for a while. I'm like, I don't know, I'm gonna talk about health only. It's the science, there's enough data alone just to really emphasize this just for the health. I mean, it's in the guidelines, right? But I still saw people struggle and struggle and struggle. And they frequently needed extra motivation. And it hit me once I was at, the International Conference on Nutrition and Medicine in Washington, D.C. It's a great conference done by uh, PCRM. It's going to be this August. I'm going to speak there as well. And I was sitting next to this pulmonologist, and he was like, yeah, man, you know, sometimes we were talking about, you know, slaughterhouses and animal agriculture and all these things. And he said, sometimes 
when I want somebody to stop smoking, uh, the American Lung Association tells us, show them pictures of charred lungs and huge tumors and people on oxygen and, and smoking through a tracheostomy and all these kind of gory pictures that you don't really want to see. But when you see it, you go, oh my gosh, ah, and it kind of, once you see it, you can't unsee it, right? And then it ends up helping to motivate people to stop smoking. Well, I have a lot of patients that want to eat plant-based, but they're so addicted to the animal foods or their spouse won't change or whatever it ends up being. So I tell them, you need to watch some videos on animal agriculture and learn about what happens there. And maybe that'll give the motivation, the ethical side, really understanding how horrific it is. And the ethics behind all this is pretty, pretty crazy. Nothing too graphic, don't worry. But it is just absolutely mind-blowing. I try to get them to watch The Dominion which is um, you know, free on YouTube. And it all talks about animal agriculture and the ethics. And I also, sometimes I have religious people and there's different religious arguments back and forth about food and all this stuff. And I just kind of keep it as simple as saying, hey, listen, man, no religion mandates meat eating. None of them do, none of them mandate it. And if you think about it, no matter which God you believe in or what religion you're in, the human body has been scientifically shown to be able to thrive on a 100% plant-based diet. There is no need to consume any animal-based food for any nutrient, right? We can live on 100% plant-based diet. That's the way that God, whatever your God is, made us. God also made animals to the point where they can feel pain and suffer and joy and want to live their life, right? So when you choose to eat an animal-based food, you are choosing to cause pain and suffering and harm to a sentient being that your God made for what purpose? For your pleasure only. It's not for nutrition. You don't need to eat animal-based foods. It's for your pleasure because your culture told you to, and you think you need to eat it for protein. That's it, but you don't. So it's for your pleasure only. And a lot of people choose a vegan diet for ethical reasons, which isn't always healthy, right? We want whole food plant-based, but they do so because they don't want somebody else to suffer just for their pleasure. And so that is uh, powerful. Watch the Dominion and my daughter loves pigs. And so I just had to show a picture of a cute pig. <laughs> and then of course, when we think about the environmental destruction that animal agriculture causes, think about in this whole religious analogy, God made the earth, right? And by eating an animal-based diet, we are destroying the planet, the earth that God created. By eating plant-based, you're not doing that. So really, you need to focus on the plant-based diet for all these different reasons, which is that extra motivation that sometimes people need. The health motivation isn't just enough for some people. So uh, that pretty much sums up um, my presentation here. Um, and I really hope that you learned something. I know we went down through the basics. Uh, hopefully some of those powerful stories can drive in some of these concepts, how important it is to start early in your life with focusing on all these things. And I'd be happy to stick around and, and take some questions. And Thank you very much, doctor. Appreciate that amazing presentation. Um, we are now going to begin our live q and I'll be asking questions as well as opening up questions to the audience to allow them to, to answer them. But before we begin, um, we'd like to make sure that everybody knows how to connect with you and learn more about you. Oh, sure. Great. Yeah. Um, there's a different, a bunch of different ways you can connect with me. I'm on Twitter. It's uh, at Steve Loam. Uh, this is the website, uh, pbnm.org, plant-based nutrition movement. This was a nonprofit organization that I founded uh, a few years ago and um, subsequently have turned it over to Merrill Fury as the uh, the CEO. They're doing lots of great things, uh, lots of different food events, lectures, potlucks, uh, and such. It's predominantly based in the Chicagoland area, but there is a lot of virtual events as well. They're doing a lot of healthy eating uh, for kids and trying to fight childhood obesity. Uh, this is a great organization. I'm not as involved with this anymore, but check it out. And if you undergo to the resource section on this website, there is so many great resources there. Uh, there's, you know, books, recipes, videos, food delivery groups, Facebook groups, you know, vacations, you could take smartphone apps, every resource you ever will need. We worked really hard to put together the plant-based resources in one spot here. So check that one out. Uh, heartstrong.com is still kind of in development. It's one of my other websites. It, um, it's kind of a step-by-step -step program. It just gets people to eat more and more and more plant-based. Uh, I'm still working on it and hopefully it's still, it's technically completed, but there's so many things I want to do with it. Uh, it's hard. I have six kids who are hundred percent plant-based by the way. So is my wife, who's a physician who's hundred percent plant-based. 
and um, being the medical director over here and the chair of the cardiovascular division of the hospital, lots of other things. It's it's a challenge to to do all these extra efforts, but I do all I can, and I hope uh, to make HeartStrong a more powerful resource for people as a kind of do-it-yourself lifestyle medicine program, like a kind of like doing an Ornish lifestyle medicine program, but doing it yourself online. But again, it takes a lot of motivation and effort. So I have that. Yeah, Twitter is at Steve Loam. I'm on Instagram a little bit. Uh, I have a YouTube channel, uh, which my kids really um, really want me to get more active on YouTube. Um, I think I have like 13,000 subscribers uh, and um, and put some good videos out there. I had the recent one about uh, the events of the marathon and trying to use that again as a tool to get people to understand that prevention is more important. It's great to learn uh, CPR, but focus on a plant-based diet for prevention. That's way more important. <laughs>